Hi, it's Cassie Olberg in Seals Grove, Pennsylvania. By the time you're watching this, I should be in sunny Mexico enjoying the Creative Memories Incentive Trip. I'll be there with a lot of my friends, but one of them is Joan Marceau, who designed this class that we're going to do today. This is basic blueprints for National Scrapbook Day. Um, if you have not met Joan yet, then you should join us for our Creative Cafe International event. She does beautiful page layouts for every single event, and um, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to see those. So anyway, I'm gonna head over to my desktop, and we are going to get started. Uh, this is a class that you can go ahead and do right along with me if you would like. So I'm going to start off by showing you exactly what we will be making. So it's three uh, page layouts. So six pages, three double page spreads. So this is the first one. Super cute. This is our National Scrapbook Day supplies. Next up is this adorable layout. Super fun, especially these cute little mushrooms. I love how this turned out. And last but not least, just a really, really fun layout. And we can add some mats and some pictures to that. So let's just go ahead and uh, go over what exactly you need in order to make all of these beautiful pages. So of course you are going to want your trimmer your custom cutting system. You probably guessed the gemstone hearts, both the large and the small pattern. You will want the um, frame, the square weighty frame. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cord out of our line of the shot. Okay. You will also want your red cutting blade. This is the only one we'll be using but you probably have all of them. The mushroom border punch and the leafy vine border punch. Of course, you want micro tip scissors. And I always keep my lifter stick, my multi-purpose tool, lots of tape close by. You're also going to want the actual consumable supplies. So you're gonna need a national scrapbook day kit I mean, accessory paper pack, a National Scrapbook Day sampler pack of cardstock, and the embellishments. So those are all of the pieces that we will be using for these page layouts. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the accessory paper pack. So let me get this little mess out of the way that I have created for myself. And here we go. So we're going to need first up this beautiful piece of paper. And it has the uh, Let's Get Wild on one side, so fun, and the little mushrooms on the other side. And you're going to put this down, and you're going to want to go ahead and center it on your mat because you are going to center this because we're going to use that frame also. So just center it, make sure it's all lined up. So the edges are gonna to come to approximately the half inch mark all the way around. And then you're gonna take your um, red blade and this can be a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure both nubs are in the track and then you're going to cut all the way around. Now, thankfully with the updated blades, this um, rotates right along with your hand as you're cutting, but you still just wanna make sure that it's in both tracks. I was gonna record this last night, but I was feeling a little tired. And whenever I went to do my first cut, I um, <laughs> didn't put it in both tracks. And I knew right then and there that I probably just wanted to take the evening off. Hmm. I like to pull this up before I lift, just in case I didn't get it cut all the way through in an area. So yeah, I thought so. I thought I missed this little corner up here. So 
So you see how I just slid that under, and since I hadn't moved this yet, I could just go back and make that cut, and so that made it easy peasy. Okay. So next, we are going to come over here, and we want to make sure that our mushrooms are going the right direction, and we're going to snip corner to corner. Now, you can do the, uh, the folding method, which I've taught on my YouTube channel before, but since this is a very short little cut, I'm not going to fold it because I just feel like that's a pretty simple thing to make. Okay. Because then this is going to flip around this way. And then we're going to take this and make sure that our mushrooms are up right there. And we're just going to cut it right down the center. So just line her up and cut. And there we have it. Okay, so we'll put these aside. That is the first piece of paper to get cut. And we'll just put them aside until we need them. Now we need our second piece of Let's Get Wild paper. And we are going to cut it at eight inches. Now remember, when you're working with this, and you want to pull the, thing, the arm out, make sure your foot is down. This foot just flips up here. And I just can't even count the number of times that I've been talking to somebody and I say there's a foot and they go, what? A foot? Yes, there's a foot. And it also works better if you don't do it over top of your mat, um, just because the um, it'll just be a little off balance. So not a big deal, but just a nice little way to do it. So then we're going to rotate this eight inches and we are going to cut it at three and a half. And then we are going to punch with this cute, cute, cute little, um, forced mushroom punch. And when you're all done making it, there are so many cute little things. Like if you watched my um, mat demonstration from last week, it was it was actually yesterday, but by the time you're watching this, it will be from last week. Um, if you go and you watch that, then there's all kinds of ways to change the tops of these heads. So you can go ahead and do that right on this. So, so many fun little additions that you can do. And that's what I like about um, the event that I was talking about, the Virtual Creative Cafe International, is that uh, we always do all kinds of really fun little things with that. Okay, like teach you cute little things. Okay, so that is our next cut. And now we are going to um, take our large heart pattern. And of course, we're going to need our custom cutting system. Matt back up here. And we are going to cut with the red blade on the outside. So again, make sure these nubs are in the track. Super important because otherwise you tear your paper. So it's just a, such a simple thing to miss getting one of those little feet outside or nubs or whatever you want to call them. And then you just lift this up and bam, you know, you've cut it all the way and you don't have to go back and go over top of any of it. We're gonna save this remaining scrap because we're gonna make, you know what, I'm just gonna make it now. And then if I lose it, it's okay. I have more scrap paper. So we're just gonna take and make ourselves, let's see. Mm, I don't like that mushroom stem. I think maybe it'll go better like this. So 
I'm making a mushroom stem. Okay, I might come back to that later. I'm not liking how this one's turning out. We'll keep that there and we'll keep these scraps here and we'll decide when we go to put it together if we need to do any additional uh, surgery there on the mushroom stem. Okay, so now we're gonna cut one inch off here so that we have a four by one inch strip. And then we are going to turn it back this way and cut it at three inches. And finally, and as you can see, we have lots of scraps. So we're gonna cut it at four and four. And I did not move my mat this time. It's not a big deal because I didn't have the foot out, so it's not as not as a dire of a thing. But there are lots and lots of scraps, but now we have all of the pieces that we need, and we'll be able to make that stem later. Next up, we need this wood grain and dark fern paper. So cute. And we're going to start off, we're going to punch a leafy vine down one side of it. Just going to slide it in. If you have not used this before, the punch area is between these two black lines. And you're going to just bring it over so that your paper lines up with one of the black lines. So I have my paper over right here to this black line. And then I'm just going to punch. And then you just keep sliding it across and you line up on the um, blue stuff over here, the blue pattern. And you make sure that when you do that, you keep it up against the top on the other side. Some people cut left to right, some people cut right to left. It doesn't really matter. As long as you make sure that you keep it up against the top um, inside that punch, because, see, look, I slipped a little. Slow down, get it slow down. Okay, there we go. And now we end up with this cute viney punch. So we'll put that off to the side for later usage. And get this out of our way. Bring this back. Now we're gonna cut it at four inches. Now see how I rotated that? That's because this is where I punch. It's pretty smooth, but why not use this side that's absolutely smooth. So we're going to bring it over and we're going to cut at four inches. Then we will rotate and cut it at eight inches. Now we're going to put that off to the side and bring this little piece back over. And now we are going to do the small heart outside red blade. Now make sure you have this centered on here nice and evenly so that you don't cut off of the paper because it's going to be tight on the edges. move around the heart just like that and voila the cute little heart which will get turned into a mushroom we're going to keep these scraps because we are going to cut another stem let's see where did i say that scrap? Oh, it's right here in my hand yay okay so now let's see last time i had trouble but i'm feeling it i'm feeling it I can do this. Okay. Oh, I like that stem so much better. Maybe I'll do the other one now that I'm feeling it a little better. Okay. 
and we just want a little bit of a curve and then up and then over. Ah, I'm happier with that one. All right. If at first you don't succeed, correct? Okay, so next up, we are going to take this cute paper. Oh my gosh, look at this. It has mushrooms and little um, animal feet all over it. The other side is blue gingham. So cute. So we are going to move them out of, out of the way because we're going to do some big cuts and bring our trimmer back. And we are going to cut it at eight inches. Then we will rotate and cut it at seven inches. So this is an eight by seven rectangle. This is extra. We can put it off to the side. We have this rectangle. And now we're going to take this four inch strip, turn it on its side, and cut it at six. So we have two four by six rectangles. We are zooming right along, guys. We are on to our cardstock. So our first cardstock that we need is tangerine. Such a pretty color. So we're going to cut it at eight inches. Seems to be the uh, name of the game today. Cut that at eight inches. And then we're going to rotate and cut it at nine and a nine and a half, nine and a half inches. We're going to cut this end, this eight inch end with the uh, mushroom punch, but I'm going to do my other cuts first real quick. So I have a four inch strip and we're going to cut it one time at six inches. And we are going to cut it one time at five and a half inches. Five and a half. Five and a half, for anybody who doesn't know, is to the very edge. So you're going to come all the way to the very edge for five and a half. And there we go. Okay. Now we're going to bring this back over. And remember, we are putting mushrooms on the short end. So on the eight inch end. And we're lining it up to the black line and coming across nice and easy and doing our punches. And that's it. So get that out of the way. And next, we are going to get out the Kelly Green cardstock. So Kelly Green is in this pack. I love the sampler packs for National Scrapbook Day. It's so nice that you can get just a couple sheets of everything that matches all in one spot. So now we are going to punch the leafy vine. And again, line it up to the black line and punch going all the way across. So it has been super, super rainy here. And I let my puppies out into the play yard. And I was working in the cabin and all of a sudden it started pouring down rain. So I went running to the rescue thinking two Bernese mountain dog puppies do not want to be out in the rain and they would not come in. They were running around playing and giggling and I just said, okay, fine. You can dance in the rain if you would like. So it just, it was just so cute. I wish, I wish I could have shown everybody. Okay. So now we're going to do some more cutting. So up comes the trimmer and we are going to bring out our little arm with the little foot again. Don't forget that foot. And we're going to cut it at eight inches. Oh, and remember rough edge. It's not that rough, but might as well have a perfectly smooth edge. So cut it at eight inches. We're going to rotate and cut it at six and a half inches. And 
we're going to punch along this edge. And we're going to measure this. This is, yes, this is eight inches across and five and a half inches down. So we are good. And now we're just going to cut it at four inches so that we have two equal size pieces. Because remember, it was eight there, so two that are four by five and a half inches. And this is going to be some extra. And now we are going to punch the top of this paper. So fun. These are going to be so cute when we're done. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my scraps. And I'm going to just make different color heads. So it's fun that this has some extra scraps that we can do that with. And it just gives the mushrooms a little bit of extra oomph, I think. So, there we go. Punched that. And now we are moving right along. Oh my gosh. This is our last piece of paper to cut. This is the last one. We've got the blue cardstock. That was a very complicated name, right? Blue. Okay. So now we are going to cut it at eight inches. So foot comes out. Don't forget that foot, guys. Seriously, don't forget the foot. I've had people that are cutting for years, and then I'm like, there's a foot. And they go, a foot? I know I told you about the foot, guys. Okay, so eight inches, and then we are going to rotate and cut it at ten inches. So then that leaves this two inch strip and we're going to turn this and cut it at six inches. And now we are going to take this four inch piece and we are going to cut it at six inches and five and a half, which is to the edge of the trimmer. And believe it or not, that was all of our cutting. So this can all get pushed off to the side. Take my little messes and push those off to the side. And we can get to the part of putting it together. Super fun. So we're going to need the mat to do this because we're going to piece some things together. So let's just pull out our page. And we are going to put it all together and we're going to do some welding to make it all work. So first thing we're going to do is grab this rectangle. And it's going to go across. And if you put it right in here, then we can put this piece. And we're going to tape it down to this so that they are pieced together. And I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up. This is just where it um, ended the punch. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to grab my silicone mat, flip this. Add repositionable tape to these cute little mushrooms. And now I am going to piece it together. So right there. This goes right here. And voila. We have an 8 by 12 inch piece. Next, we are going to grab this. Four inch piece. I'm going to go over here and we are going to take, where's our short mushroom piece? Oh, I think I forgot to punch some mushrooms. That's okay. We can add punching the mushrooms now. Oh. Give me one second. 
think this through. Oh, I see what we did. Okay, so these are gonna get these are gonna go here. Silly, silly me. We're going to piece this together and then cut it apart. I tried to use the math. Thankfully, I didn't have you cut anything. Ooh, that was a close one, wasn't it? Okay. So, just line this up on the mat, just like we did with the last one. Put it the correct direction. So the eight inches are across the top. And then take this, line it up on the 12 inch, and voila. So now we have another piece. And finally, we'll take our dark blue and we will do the exact same thing. with the smaller piece. And we would like the wild up, so we should tape here. Although, it would look cute the other way too. So, there isn't really a wrong. It's just that this is the way it's designed. Okay. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to cut it down the center. So this should be, oh, I need to move my mat out of the way. So this should be a beautiful eight inches. Let's just double check that. And it is. So we're going to bring it to four. And slice. Right down the center. Now, we're going to weld. And who doesn't love the weld? Now, there are a couple of ways that you can weld. You could go ahead and use any backing paper, you know, the paper that comes inside the insert of every pack, or you could just use some of the scraps from the class we just did. Um, the original class, I welded with backing strips. I don't know where I put that piece of paper at this exact moment, so I'm just going to cut myself some approximately one inch strips from some of the scrap paper from this class. Super simple. And now I will take this and flip it. And just make sure you have it lined up on your mat again, like this. And you're going to turn it into a 12 by 12 page. Now, if you are working right in your scrapbook, that's really the easiest thing to do, right? Because um, you can tape it right down the page. But if you like to use like top loaders, then this is a great way to do it, or if you don't know exactly where in the lineup of your album this is going to go, so you don't want it onto a page, then this is just a really great technique to save paper and not have to keep it down to another sheet of clip stock. So we're just going to do the same thing with this one. It's going to go together like this. So we're going to flip it. Mm -hmm. and line it up on the mat like so. Oh, why do we always pull our paper like down when we're working? Seems to be a common thing for everybody. When we're doing our CCI classes, we're always like, move it down, move it down. It's so nice to have a moderator to tell you that. When you're on here all by yourself, it's like, ooh, I need to move it, move it up, move it up. Okay, so now I'm just going to 
smear tape all over this again. I use a lot of it. I don't want it to fall apart. Okay. So now I have my welded together pages. It's so cute. See how that comes together in the center there? And now I can add my cute little fox over here if I want to. Super cute. So he's just going to go down here in this corner. I'm going to add my four by six mat up here. So that's just going to go centered right here. Got pieces and parts everywhere, guys. I won't lie pieces and parts all over the place. So now I need my mushrooms here and my wild here. And they get centered. And then we're going to take our tangerine. Where'd you go? Our tangerine mat, and we're gonna slice it down the center. So it is five and a half. So it needs to be two and three quarters. And that will give us half. And then you wanna put these together so that they line up nicely. The other thing, when Joan did hers, she actually taped it down across the two, and then she cut it in half. So I just did it in a little bit different order. There's no wrong. Then we're going to put this cute gingham one over here. How good I am on screen. Hear me. And then finally, this cute little title bar is going to go right up here. And we will add just a final little touch. Oh, I'm at the end of my tape. Yay, I love it when that happens. I have another one here, guys, I swear. Okay. There we go. And we're just going to add this up here. And there is our double page slip. So you can go ahead and do that right along with me. Hopefully you have that all done. And we can move on to the next double page spread. So next up, we have this cute layout. And this time, we are going to build right onto the papers. So no welding required. So we're going to pull out this cute one. And this one. And we're just going to take these two. And of course, we're going to need our silicone mat. And we will add tape.
and just overlap them so that you have one peeking out from the other. And then this is just going to go right down the edge of this one. Next, we're just going to need all of our mats from the cardstock. And we're just going to layer them on here. So this one is going to go down first, the blue one. Then we're going to layer the tangerine right up here. And finally, the Kelly green one is going to go right here. And where did I throw my embellishments? Over my shoulder? I hope not. Oh, they're right here. Okay. And then we're just going to embellish right over here. And that side is done. And we can finish up this side, which is just going to be this and this. And our mushroom and our other mushroom. And of course, our stems. So I'm going to, I want my stems to be a little bit longer. I did them more like a pumpkin stem, I think. And I want them to be longer than that. So let's take this, let's round it a little here. To remind myself it's not rocket science. It's just a cute little mushroom stem. So now this one can go down. And now I need a little bit of that fern paper. And I don't think I have enough left over from cutting the heart out. So I'm just going to go ahead and splurge and use a little bit of this. I just want it a little wider at the bottom than I do at the top. A little bit of a curvature to it. And bam. Maybe slide this one over just a tiny bit. I put it at three marks, but I think the three and a half mark is going to be a little bit better. going to go down and then I'm gonna put this one down overlapping them and now I have cute little mushrooms and now I can put my my title up here he's such a fun guy no. who knows what the title will be but that very well could be it and voila Second double page spread is done. Super simple, super fun. Okay. And now our last one. So easy. We just want the pumpkin and the hot fudge card stocks. And then we are going to take these fun, fun shapes that we made. And we're going to put this here. And then 
something wild here. And then we're going to put this over here. And the mushrooms here. And we're going to keep it down. And then we're going to add this over here. We're almost there, guys. It's easy to do this if you just start in the corner and go up and then over. And then we're going to tape on this side. And then just line your corners up. Ta -da. And finally, we're going to add, so let's get wild. Because really, it is pretty wild to use these fun square shapes, right? That's pretty wild. And there we have it, guys. Okay. I hope that you had fun and you got the pages all done. And if not, you can go back and rewatch it if you'd like. And I will hopefully see you all soon. Thanks so much and have a great day.